Hey guys, what's up, and welcome back to another Shadowlands review. As I promised in my K3 review, the K3 SPW is out right after it, so I hope you guys are uh, going to enjoy this little review. I think I've got a pretty good one planned out here for you guys. So hopping straight into the stats, we have a damage of 40, portability of 35, rate of fire of 82, and accuracy of 58 with a recoil of 73. Now, for any of you guys that watch the K3 review, you'd know that this is, these are the exact same stats as the K3. Now, the Gun Emporium slash shop, whatever you want to call it nowadays, claims that it has a higher portability. However, the stat of 35 is the same on both guns, so statistically that's a lie, and honestly I can't notice a difference either. If it was really going to be that big of an increase, they would probably only put 2 or 3 points on it anyway, and it's pretty hard to notice anything that's not at least an 8 point difference. So, that's at least how I view it. Overall, this is pretty much the same gun as the K3. The only difference I noticed when I actually went to do this review is that the damage drop-off is actually quite a bit better on the K3 SPW. The reload rate, I can't notice a difference, although there might be a bit of a faster reload on the SPW, but if there is, it's not enough to notice or even make that big of a difference. So the damage of 40 has the better damage drop-off, although the statistic obviously is the same. Portability of 35 is incredibly low, even for a machine gun, which is pretty bad. Um, rate of fire of 82 is very high. I mentioned in the regular K3 review that this series has a pretty high rate of fire, making it more useful in Elim games and Elim prototype games, capture the flag, non-fire team games than most other uh, machine guns. However, that also, in my opinion, is kind of a preference for me with Cabin Fever or Black Lung. I prefer to have high rate of fire weapons that have a decent amount of damage, which machine guns tend to sport. And with the better damage drop-off on this one, it just makes it all that much easier. Now, to get that better damage drop-off and still keep that high rate of fire, you're going to need to get to Major 1 in order to use this gun. The regular K3, however, is available at Staff Sergeant 1, so if you want to get used to that gun first and you think this gun might interest you, probably the way to go. However, this gun is also quite a bit more expensive. For 7 days, you are paying 7,700 GP. That's 7,700 GP for 7 days. The K3, an example, uh, for 7 days is only 5,100, so approximately 5,100 GP. For 1 day, the regular K3 is 1,050, so you're looking at a much, much more expensive uh, machine gun when you're going with the K3 SPW. Now, like I also mentioned in the K3 review, I do prefer my Yuletide Annihilator, the MG34, and the MG42 Steel over guns like this because they have a very high rate of fire, better portability, and still maintain that really high damage. And one thing that I mentioned that I'm not too happy with the K3 series in particular um, is that it performs very similar to the Minimi, although the Minimi, in my in my opinion, is just better in general. Not to mention, if you get the Minimi Camo or the Minimi Para, you're able to get one with either a scope or, be or better stats than the basic Minimi. Also, you should be able to try some of the ones that are in the... Uh, uh, shop. I do prefer the MK48 to the series, just in my opinion, because of the higher damage stat. One thing that really annoys me with the K3 series is the very low base stat. Although it has pretty good damage drop-off, the damage of 40 is just way too low, in my opinion, to be useful for a machine gun. If I want a damage that's that low and I still want a high rate of fire, I'm more likely to go with a SOP mod or an M4A1 series gun, M416 maybe it, whatever, G36 anyway, where I can get a higher rate of fire and a higher damage, where I can get 45 damage with a good damage drop-off and a pretty high rate of fire. I don't know the stat off the top of my head, but the accuracy being high with the rate of fire high enough and the damage high, all of that, in my opinion, is really good. Also, I don't typically need 100 shots to kill a couple of people. I can usually do that with my average 30 size magazine, so I find the 100 ammo capacity a bit excessive outside of using it for cabin fever and other games where you really just want to spray a lot. So... If you're going to look for ELIM guns to use, if you're looking for a machine gun to use an ELIM, if you're willing to spend the NX, the MG42 or the M21E are both excellent ways to go. The M60E4 is good, but I wouldn't say it's so much better than the uh, regular GP guns for the M60 family that you might want to get the NX standard one. So I would say you're probably better off sticking with the MG42 Steel and the uh, MK48 if you like the GP variant of that. And if you're a high enough rank, the MK48 camo is supposed to be really fun to use, although I've actually never used that gun, surprisingly. That's a review that I should probably have coming out pretty soon. But um, just like the regular K3, the K3 SPW is fully automatic with no burst mode and can take a magazine. It cannot take a silencer like every other machine gun in the game, and it cannot take a scope, sadly. I do wish they would make it so that you can put ACOG scopes on... Uh, uh, machine guns, I feel like that'd be really useful. I tend to use that uh, scope a lot when I play with the RPKS mod or the uh, MK48 mod 0. I tend to find that really, really useful. It helps with spraying and cabin fever. You can even tap fire it to a degree, and it makes for spraying down people on Junk Flea from a higher you know, range, a little bit easier. So I do prefer the scope, and it really kind of hurts me that you can't put a scope on it in this game. But that's about all the time I have for a review today, guys. Thank you for watching. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Shadowlands out.